Every once in a while, something offbeat and oddly spectacular comes along. This time, it's the Netflix satire El Conde. This is a reimagining of history with a horror twist. So let's dive into what makes this such a good film. Imagine a parallel universe inspired by the recent history of Chile, where Augusto Pinochet, a symbol of world fascism, is a vampire who lives hidden in a ruined mansion in the cold southern tip of the continent, feeding his appetite for evil to sustain his existence. After 250 years of life, Pinochet has decided to stop drinking blood and abandon the privilege of eternal life because he can no longer bear that the world remembers him as a thief. So this is a black and white presentation that adds a very artsy and ominous tone to the aesthetic. Now, some of the stylings in this remind me a bit of A Girl Walks a Home Alone at Night, and not only because it's black and white and a vampire story, but the cinematography uses a combination of intimate character scenes as well as very wide and beautiful landscape shots to help tell the story. Now, the opening 10 minutes of this movie set the stage via narration, giving us the backstory on how this guy named Pinoche eventually became Pinochet. Now, it's a quick and effective way of developing the character and then fleshing out the story so that when we enter the world as Pinochet is deciding to retire permanently, we're not caught by surprise at some of his actions. Now, the dark humor comes about as Pinochet's adult children return home to rifle through their father's belongings to snatch up anything of value. And at the same time, an exorcist nun pretending to be an accountant arrives with the hidden agenda of determining if Pinochet is actually a vampire, and if so, to destroy him. Now, the sequences that we watch play out with these characters, they made me laugh out loud thanks to the ridiculousness of the conversations and then the way they're expertly delivered. The satire and the wit of the dialogue, it's subtle, but I found it hilarious. I mean, when the nun is speaking with the family as they go over the financials, she's deadpan and very blatant as she tells them what she's doing. It goes right over their heads. I mean, she literally spells out her motivations and plans, but they're so consumed by their own greed and hubris, they don't even hear her. And the looks the nun gives in these situations are also extremely funny because of how dumbfounded she is by their lack of response. And with this, I mean, if you're not paying attention to the dialogue, the movie's not really going to work. The satire is contained within the words being spoken and then combined with the expressions. And that's not to say that what we're shown visually is uninteresting or even unappealing. I mean, I was mesmerized by the cinematography and the shot choices that they used. Many times we'll have centered characters looking directly into the camera, creating a very intimate shot sequence that places us literally in the middle of a conversation, as the camera will then switch back and forth between two people that are speaking. And these types of shots aren't only reserved for one-on-one -on -one discussions. Several times the family will be in a group talking, whether that's maybe outside or around a table, and the camera will focus in on one so that they can have our undivided attention as they speak, showcasing either some telling facial expression or or delivering a line of dialogue that's quirky or biting. Now, almost all of what we see is done practically, and some of it is visceral and grotesque, capturing the true horror of a kill. And keeping it black and white, it does lessen the gross-out factor with the blood, but it doesn't remove the violence of the actions. When we get to see something being destroyed, whether by being drained, maybe sliced open, or bashed to pieces, the practical effects are outstanding. There are even some times, like it's shown in the trailer, that Pinochet will fly with his large cape just flowing behind him in the wind. Now, sometimes the use of a green screen is noticeable, but that's in rare instances. Most of the time, the flying effects look completely convincing and then beautifully executed. This is a slower movie to experience, but it doesn't drag or become boring. Now, there is patience to the visual storytelling, though. I mean, there are many scenes where we just observe characters doing small actions without dialogue. And this creates a very artsy feel, as I had said before, but it also gives us the opportunity to be enveloped by the atmosphere and the musical score. The slow and melancholy stringed instruments, they just help to complement the natural ambient sounds to create this haunting mood. But not one that's scary, it's just ominous. And there are many unhurried pans and zooms that the camera makes, giving the presentation a slightly meandering sense, but there's no stagnancy to the actual storytelling. The narrative is paced to move us along through the story efficiently, introducing elements of mystery as well as curiosity. And even though the presentation may feel somewhat pretentious thanks to the visuals and minimal dialogue, this is a fairly accessible movie to take in. It's made to be more of a thinking movie than one you just put on and then doom scroll your phone. But the humor and the wit, it's pretty universal, diving into family dynamics, sibling squabbles, romantic interests, and then ambition. 
The story does a wonderfully efficient job of poking fun at these situations and characters, showcasing the faults in slightly absurd ways, but all while enveloping us in a story that's captivating and fun. Now, the setting the production uses feels very much like a stage play, but on a massive scale. I'm not referring really to the exterior shots, but so much of what we see takes place in this dilapidated compound out in the middle of nowhere. It is unassuming, just like Pinochet, but it hides many secrets and horrors. I really didn't know what to expect when I started watching. I knew it was a black and white movie that supposedly was satirical and might involve vampires. I was shocked, though, at how immersed I became in the entire thing. I loved the characters. All of them. I mean, as snivelly as some of the adult children could be, and as petty as a lot of the family was, and even El Conde himself, I mean, each of them has so much charisma and presence that commanded attention. I was utterly sucked in. The reimagining of history through the incisive view makes this story and the real-life events even more intriguing. Plus, as the theme of greed is woven throughout the narrative, it provides a storyline that can be very relatable, especially when family dynamics are thrown into the mix. Spectacular visual stylings and presentation complement the beautiful wit of the dialogue to create a masterfully told story that will make you want to stay forever with this flawed and fanged leader. There is sex, nudity, a bunch of profanity, and then a ton of gory and brutal violence. I give El Conde five out of five couches. I mean, this has been an amazing week of watching for me, and hopefully it is for you too. Let me know some of the things that you're looking forward to watching in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.